Um, first off, just a little test animation here. Um, you know, this guy is like, uh, I don't know why he's looking up afterwards. That is he looking up? Oh no, he's not. He's looking forward. Just starts his pose downward. Anyways, um, so there were a few bones that, when selected, needed to have a deform turned off if they shouldn't have been exported. Uh, you know, they have use in the rig, but then after everything's baked, they don't really do much, right? They're not referenced. They're kind of just dead weight. So, uh, like these controllers here, they had their deform turned off because they control it in the Blender application, but outside of that, in the FBX and in Unity, they, they do nothing. So, file, export, FBX, and then in armature, yeah, I would take off uh, all the deformed bones, and I would actually toggle both of these. I would take off the leaf bones, because they do nothing also. So, if we go here, when we look at the entire hierarchy, now all the IK controllers, all the um, the leaf bones, uh, the end effectors, the FK, IK stuff, it's all taken out. Just the bones that matter that do the deform, that important hierarchy is in here. Last time we looked at this clip editor. Let's see, I still have this lip sync edit. So that's still working. So there's some changes. Hold on. Oh my god, a little too close. So I'll take this character. And last time, what did we look at? We looked at this one. So uh, test audio, test, test. Yeah, this one, is two, it. Three. We're gonna I made sure to also pipe in the audio into, into the record. See so, how but that does. So well, uh, test stop that, and this is, uh, you know, this should look somewhat familiar, even though everything's been revamped a bit. Um, let's see, so much tracks, we'll just go through them all, why not? I don't know what you want me to do, I already uh, took it, or, or borrowed without these will it come in. It. Uh, it's gone, I have it. Relevant later, I'm not sure some other back. stuff. Okay. Rup, 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 rup. Oh my god, I can get lost looking at this all day. And some things I did the eye and the eyebrow animation for, and others I didn't. And, yeah. I'll get lost in this, and then let's see, look at it go. Ooh, look at it go. Okay, nope, there's nothing here. Nothing here. And I see, like, the crease of the mouse's mouth is pretty strong. Maybe um, things need to be reweighted to have a more gradated... Uh, transition so it's not very square when the mouth is open but oh welly welly well right this looks useful i'm gonna steal it but you know that that's more a uh, polish work i think and again we're throwing polish and all that to the wayside uh, right now just to get everything off the ground i have the ability to add whatever i type into here or based off what string is in here i can uh, reconstruct so instead of i'm gonna steal it i can say i'm gonna steal I don't know, uh, you know, butts. Then I could say reconstruct. Oh, actually, remember I never touched this before. It needs to add in uh, the white spaces, but, you know, it, uh, <laughs> you know, basically if you make changes here and you want to have the subtitle, the full version, uh, be in sync, you can hit reconstruct. So anyways, we have this in control moved here with uh, some presets. Because I found myself often, you know, having to just go from 10 to 500 and just required a lot of dragging. And actually, I needed a thousand uh, level zoom, but so that helps. Um, science stuff, jeez. All right, so let's see. Zoom playback. I have uh, these ASCII characters that before I had, you know, this like character here and then a checkbox symbol. Um, you know, but now, Ooh, you know, well, these are just normal well, characters, not sprites or textures, but I'm gonna steal this it. is still the checkbox here. I couldn't find a good uh, filled-in black square that wasn't, you know, just the tiniest thing ever for some reason. Um, there's no square, like, the size of these guys or these guys. I don't know why. Ooh. But moving on, let's see. Speed also been changed. Just quality of life thing. So if we hit this. We have, um, you know, well, speed settings well, here, well, as well as the slider at the end for, like, finer control. You can still drag this guy. You can still type in numbers here. Let's see. 
we can loop and then constrain when we have constraints we are into um, this view here this gets added and so what this does is now to set that um, constrain region we could do this before but it's very hard to get that fine uh, fine tune control so now we have the tab drags here so that's the start and that's the width and so you don't have to worry about because you know, basically this goes in increments of whatever it goes by, like a certain maybe tenths or hundredths or whatever, but in a different zoom times a thousand, you want it to move like a thousand less as fast, right? And you don't get that, but here you do because it's just wherever your mouse position uh, was. Um, let's see, we can select one of these guys and go into its editing view again if we want, or we can click it out and be in the global. Uh, this was recentered correctly. Um, so if I want to constrain just the region, I can hit constrain there. It'll move the constrain region to just that window so I can move around. Um, this is enabled. So if I hit that, then it's no longer processing it. And so you see at the end of the mouth moving, that's just this well. If I turn that off, nothing's going on. Oh, that, that could probably get annoying very fast. <laughs> um, let's see. So... And then if I'm like playing with uh, this location and I want it to still be constrained, I can hit um, this lock constraint here. And then whenever I move this guy, it'll update the constraint to match it. Let's see, let me try to get that to match. Let's turn off constraint. Oh, Ellie, oh, Ellie, Ellie. All right, so that looks good. Um, so I changed the start, you know, fade in, fade out envelopes in the end to, um, how I had the tabs could drag it, and it's kind of like a cascading stair. Now it's uh, two levels. We're saving space here. I think it's also more intuitive. Just uh, top level is start and end, you know, like the complete boundaries of this thing. And then the envelopes are just on the inside, um, you know, on the same row. And uh, I got this little preview thing here. It's just uh, drawing the handles, the Unity handles in the GUI editor. Um, you know, and this has the ability to have final control as opposed to, again, these things which don't respect the zoom. Um, and then an unfinished feature is if you're like playing all this stuff and, um, you know, because I was hitting an uh, enable off, right? So disabling it so that, let's say if I just want to see this guy here and maybe I don't want the transitions uh, this guy and this guy affecting me like blend it in so I can just get this word down correctly I could disable the ends, but if that becomes a little too tedious what I could do instead is hit solo And you see that um, everything's faded out and this is you know red so it's like hey You're only gonna see this thing being processed um, Right now it's just at a UI level But I want it to be functional too because this will also still blend but we know what's solo We can turn it we can switch what's soloed and we can turn it off by re-clicking what's on. So uh, that's something I plan to do in the future. Um, yeah, we made these shorter. We um, we kind of condensed this down. We made these black bars that separate the layers. Um, yeah, these ha being trailed at the end, that was just kind of Charlie Fox trotty. Um, so they just moved to one bar at the top because it's not, Sometimes you'll drag, sometimes you'll, you know, you'll type here. Well, that went out into nowhere. But uh, the thing is, usually you'll leave that alone and do the drag tabbing here. So it could be a little more inaccessible and out of the way. I mean, it's still there, you know. I would, I would say it's actually just as accessible as it was before. It's just um, in a cleaner location. Okay, and then if I have stuff, you know, just drug out of order, I could hit uh, resort and it'll change uh, the ordering so that it's still in chronological order. Anyways, um, let's see, anything down here? Actually there is, so if I move the edit cursor here, it definitely changes. First off is I showed last week um, jumping back and forth um, and there's only one of them, even though there's two curves here. Now there's a second one uh, that modifies the values and we have the uh, the tick marks here saying where the keyframes of uh, these guys are. So I could jump around here for the, the values, uh, jump around here for the weights. Usually I'll just need the one up top. Um, 
let me see. I could, uh, you know, jump to one of these guys and then modify that guy, or I could jump to where no keyframe is before, and uh, you know, drag it to create a new one. And then if I move, you know, if I move this guy off, then you'll see another tick mark there for a, a newly created keyframe. The top weights only go from zero to one, or they should. So the slider has been changed here, as opposed to the bottom one, where very often things go to zero to one, but depending on what uh what channel you're editing, you can go from zero to one instead of zero to one. Wait, I didn't say that right. You can go from negative one to one instead of zero to one. Blah. You know, just thoughts, words, not important. Numbers. Um, so we have the ability to parameterize and say, you know, what is the range and what elements do they show here and control here? Uh, for the start and the uh, end, You'll notice that if I go to the very left, I have this extra space. That's because if stuff is, you know, to the very left at zero, we still have the ability to uh, to drag the start control over. And that's the same uh, here. If I want to change the drag and the start, usually I just want to change the width. But if I want to change the start, I have the ability. That makes more sense for like uh, global items here. You know, where I, it's not offset and contained within one of these uh, blocks, but, you know, exist within the entirety of all of them. Then dragging the start to some position makes sense. Um, yeah, especially for, like, uh, facial position or expressions and all that. Let me see. Uh, I could get lost. So there's a lot of uh, facial expressions here. Moving the, uh, let's see what the channels are. Well, there's a bug apparently where the channels just don't show after a certain point. Or do I have, is it throwing exceptions? I don't know where the console is, but well, I don't know about these guys, how nothing's there. Maybe this is a hint, but it'd be more like, a, you know, these channels are frowning, smirking, the right eye open. Uh, I gotta look at some of these bugs, but you know, you can delete it. Uh, Let's, well, actually, let's go into one of these. You can delete it by hitting the X still, although I moved it inwards. Um, so this is kind of following the same pattern as this guy here. Um, the The height here is made larger so that because here you really can, you know, click anywhere to scrub along. Um, and you only need to click on these guys. It doesn't really do much unless you want to have one of these handles. It's more just visual. Well, oh, clicking on will actually drag. It'll be like the same as clicking that because that was more convenient. But there's so much more space here where you can, um, you know, drag along. We're, we're here, especially if you're in a focused view of one of these guys. Then um, basically you want to, you know, scrub and click along this window here. But all this is taken up because if you click here, it'll open up the animation editor. Uh, the curve editor, Unity's curve editor. So this gives you more region of where you can uh, click with less precision to scrub along. Um, let's see, what else is there? What else? These envelopes here, because usually um, the weightings, it's, it's for two things, right? The weighting is so you can fade in and out and not start your uh, the effect of your channel at full ramp up. But, so I would like start at, uh, you know, zero here, and then here I could probably go to one, and then go to one here, set a keyframe there, and then, you know, ramp it all the way down. And here, so this phoneme is slowly um, giving its effect and then fading out. But for these words, it seems like a common thing where I'd have to do that all the time. So basically, um, you know, uh, this, this was covered last week too, I believe, this feature, but now I have um, these drawings here. And not only that, for these, um, for the global ones, it makes more sense. I can right click and say, I want to clear it out. I want to zero, so I don't have to go in the editor and like, you know, drag this somewhere specific. But uh, I want something at the start with the zero, with the one, with the envelope where we go in at a fourth and then we fade out at a fourth, or I can do that in tenth. So, 
you know, I could just easily just go across all these and set if I need to. So those are the changes in the lip sync editor. And then we have this whole different beast, which is the scripted event state machine, which if I go back to default, um, this is um, three things. One, it's a state machine and a runtime for it. Actually, that's two things. I'll count two things. And then an editor system. So first, let's just look at the editor because that's what makes the most sense. A scripted event editor here. I need to drag in a uh, program, which I could click. This is a program here. Or I could click something with a program. This is, you know, it's an empty program, I think. Oh, it's got a layer. So um, for the scripted events, for the programs, there are um, a few types of primitives. There are layers, states, conditions, actions, uh, values, and then comments. You don't see the values here. And then containers, it's always empty because that was an idea that didn't really go to fruition. But if I click here, we have the options of what we want to add, and they will be added where I right-clicked. So animation then right click delete that and then for things that exist in the scene because it's these things are scriptable objects and scriptable objects can exist as files or they can exist in the scene and be saved with the dot unity file so that you know if it's relevant to the scene it stays with the scene it if you move the, the unity file it passes with that um and you if you got like a million things going on they stay where it's relevant and not um you know, they don't clutter up your file system with like just a bunch of files and you have to like know which scene they go to and, you know, manage that yourself with like, I don't know, a naming convention. Well, let's actually show what's going on here. That'll make more sense context-wise. So I have the scene. I'll show this thing off later too. Um, and then there is this uh, cube that's going to move around. There's just the sphere. That's a, a sphere. And there's this capsule with this box at the top. And this is like a item you can collect. So... If I hit play, and I'll show off these variables later too, but let's say if I click on this, he'll walk up there, he'll walk back just to align himself. Oh my god, I can get play this lost audio. looking at this all day. And the subtitle here is just basically, we have the information of when a word starts and ends, so we know when to highlight it. But if we wait a moment, and just watch Ooh, him. Look he it looks go. at us, he says that, and then he looks back at this. All right, so if we click on this thing. Nope, there's nothing here. Plays that animation, and then he just holds that. Um, there's more that he does, but we'll skip that for now. Uh, if we click on this thing. Oh, well, he will. Um, and he's talking about stealing it, but we're just going to click back, and we'll do it again. Ooh. And basically, this is an interrupt. So there's a scripted event, and we interrupt it, and we stop it, which means... So he's going to steal it, but because we... Oh, oh no! Well, this looks useful. Uh, I gotta pause for this one. I don't know. Maybe phone should be silent. Maybe it doesn't matter. Um, but anyways, let's replay that because that that happened in the background. Let's click on this and let him just do his entire spiel. Oh, welly, welly, well, this looks useful. I'm he's gonna looking around. Steal it. And then he looks back. So I don't know. What and he looks at us. When he I already talks. Uh, took it. Borrowed without ask, it's gone. I have it. And this looking at us is in a can animation, it. so I should be able to do this from another location. And he'll, oh my god, come on, guy, he'll look at it. I don't know what you at want a different to angle, do. You know, already, it's, uh, it's just a look at it. it. Borrowed without ask, it's gone. I have it. It's the same as uh, it. you know this right here. I just interrupted him though by telling him to do something, but you know, like the way I could have him look at uh, different things. Oh, god, get! Oh no, he's stuck. <laughs> tight squeeze not a uh, this level design isn't optimized um but yeah so get camera so he's basically just doing one of these um let's have him look at just in front of himself now wait yeah Bro. um so how are these things being programmed well for everything in an adventure game there's a lot of events we wouldn't want to like go into c sharp and just have like a script for it or maybe a level that just has a huge uh, like case statement, right? And we just pass an event and then it says based off what event, blah. Um, you know, it's possible. That's not the way I wanted the tech to go though. So basically we'll open up the editor, script event editor here. And this might be a little uh, compact, but 
You actually don't need the editor. This thing's got its own inspect, or we don't need the inspector. This thing's got its own. And then let's pass in, uh, let's see, this guy here. So, let's see, that's called the mover cube. So if I drag that here, here's the program. This is the main. And um, so basically, you could have multiple layers. And they can whoop, hit that, and they have to have unique names. Um, but you could say, when the state machine is started, I could have it on or off, and I can view it by clicking around here. I don't think rename does anything right now, but if you wanted to rename these things, um, but I have no use for these right now. Usually, for the complexity and logic, I've only needed the one layer, but click on that. And then these are the various um, states that it could be at. This green thing means the starting state, so when the program starts, you know, like, when I run this program, he'll start by looking at um, looking at that object, and it's only activated after we, you know, visit it. Because uh, I'll get into that later. But um, you can see the flow here from the state. Whenever he's done looking at this, he'll transition into waiting for one second. When that's done, he'll transition to walking. When he's done reaching that location, he'll walk to another location. Um, and there are different settings, and this can control NPCs too. So, you know, right now I'm controlling the main character, and this character here shouldn't be showing up because um, you'd say what the name is for the character, but it, it's this guy no matter what. His name doesn't matter. But if we had um, name here, then the character name would matter because if we had multiple characters, like who do you want to walk to where you specified? Um, so walk to these locations. And these locations are defined in uh, this game level here, which I actually do need the inspector back here. Um, it's got a few things that it knows about, objects, characters, uh, locations. So if I type in string names, these are matching this level here, um, which is the active level. Um, things, programs that will start when the level started. Oh yeah, location. So whenever I say like test location, there's um, it's saying Let's see, where's Tesla cool? This guy here, and then an offset from it. So wherever this guy right here is where he'll walk to. Um, so that, let's see what else there. He'll rotate towards the camera. This is just a, a graph, really, a graph state machine. Um, this could like cycle left and right, up and down. So you aren't expected. Here we have the logic go you know, left to right, then right to left. So it's not like, and that's why we have these sockets on both ends because you can connect from either or side. Um, and these guys are like, if you didn't want to type stuff in, but if you want to reference stuff, you just drag it over and, you know, it's time. Maybe I want these guys to both have the same reference time. So bam, um, yeah, like that. But uh, I don't, so let's see, so Basically, he'll keep doing that until it goes to an end, and then when it goes to an end, when there are no more states running on, and there are no more layers that have states running, then the program will be finished, unless something interrupts and shuts down the program uh, first. Um, and so here we see multiple transitions. So whenever this is tr you know complete in transitions, you'll have two active states running, and they'll do their own thing. And if they um, if multiple running transitions uh, connect to um, to something. Basically, you can only have one state running at a time, because basically they would, if you had multiple um, contexts of a state running, and the state advanced, they would just both double up on um, you know whatever they transition to, and that's that may not be entirely true, but for the most part, it's true to where it's not useful. So this is to turn it on and off in the program, but to while it's being executed, layers can turn on and off. If you want to do that manually, you'd click the little R button here, and then you'll see a little animated arrow saying what state's currently running. And again, multiple states can be running. You can actually have multiple starting states uh, if you wanted to. But, and then for every uh, state that's active, you'll see the animated arrow. Here, okay, we'll walk there, and then I'll walk back a bit. Oh my God, I can get lost I'll looking at this all this day. thing when he's done talking. Uh, Really, the choreo shouldn't be this long. There's a little dead space at the end. But uh, we'll wait just a moment. 
And that's just him looking at this thing. Ooh, look at it go. So, you know, he'll look at the camera to talk to us, and then he'll look back at it, and then Ooh, he'll wait again, and this go. will cycle for as long as, uh, until you interrupt by clicking. And so this was activated by, uh, this object has, wait, this mover cube, um, has this object called game mouse action. And if I click on anything with the game mouse action, it'll run the on click program. And I could say, if I click again, uh, completely shut down the program. Um, you know, and that's how we did. I don't know what you, so I don't know in the program, it's not written to, um, to, you know, detect that interrupt and shut the program down as like some kind of, you know, state machine node in there. It's actually just a little setting yeah, here. Um, but yeah, that's this program that we're viewing. And if I had a program here, then I could view that here. Cause so basically it's based off a, um, this interface class that describes how many programs you have and what are they called so that if I click here, I can view the entire array. Find the script, go to edit, script. Okay, so um, this I program machine listener will basically, um, you know, look, oh yeah, it'll say how many, uh, how many state machines it have and then you can say what they're called, the program, and if they're running a current one, what's the, this is like a running version of this, right? I click on this guy and then this guy gets removed and then when I click on it again, he says it's gone. What do you want me to do? Right? Welly, welly, well. This looks useful. And that's because we actually I'm store the, uh, the variable state. So this game has a variable state that can be saved out. So, you know, if I click on this restart here and I'll reload the level and it's different from hitting stop and play because um, static variables are the same. The game manager, which does not get destroyed, um, and holds the variables uh, are the same too. So if I hit restart, you know, then I restart here, but this isn't here because there's a program. Oh my God. Finish your walk animation guy. Ah, <laughs> um, you know, that says all the variables been set. So this shouldn't be here. It's already been taken. And then we take away that variable or no, we take away that object based on the variable words. Um, and then that's also that variable is what uh, branches his logic of what he does. I don't know what you want me to do. So I already he already knows that it's gone, it. even though I haven't right. taken it in this run through of the level. And then I can also uh, save those variables. So this would be if I go to, um, you know, file save and then load it up uh, some other day when I run my previous playthrough, my save through. So we'll stop, play, and then we'll uh, load those variables. And then we'll restart here as if we had just gotten to this um, level and it'll be gone because that's one of the things that was saved. Oh my God, this animation. I gotta figure out these transitions locking up. This capsule is this capsule. And then what he'll do is he'll look at it, right? And this is comparing the value got thing, um, which is if he has that. And then if he does have it, three transitioning states will happen. And then if he doesn't have it, then so if true, do this, if false, do these. And I can add these by right clicking and saying add a, add a state transition. And then like clicking it on or off, this one's off. What happens here? Look at, oh no, so this is saying if it's uh, on true or on false. And if I want to disable it, I just don't have anything connected to it, right? Um, let's see, here I'm referencing values. Um, here's a comment node. So this doesn't do anything except just, you know, uh, has a box, has a comment here that I can make as large as I want. It's, it's resizable. So this is, um, if we're going to steal it, this is if it's already been stolen. Um, let's see some more states. These exclamation point things are actions. So that these are extra things that aren't states, they're just one-off events that could happen on certain events. There's on exit, there's on enter, there's um, on interrupt. When on interrupt, um, if an event or state is interrupted, then 
all the events will run. You just can't start or stop uh, states because everything's going to be shut down. So those um, requests are denied. But so yeah, and then these conditions here. Uh, so you could say if you want actions to happen on true or on false. So and then I would just connect this to like a, a state to say I want a transition. Um, no, I could connect. These are the transitions if it's true. I could connect this to a, another condition to say if this is true, run that condition. And then if that's true, it could you know uh, do more actions or run more cascading conditions. So let's run this guy here. So I lose like the handle to this thing um, whenever I start or stop the game. So I got to reassign it. Capsule, capsule. And this object here is also, before I get to that, um, if I go to the level, 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 game level, um, it's the thing called thing. So, you know, got thing, that's the thing. You get the idea. So click on this. So you saw the start real quick and stop the transition. All these things are running here. It's hard to put everything in one frame, but um, at the very end, um, let's see. I'll change this look at back to look at nothing from looking back and forth at this. Um, let's see, the first time after the entire dialogue happens, we'll set the value here, got thing. And we'll also destroy it so it's no longer there. So, you know, I said I was going to take it, and now you don't see it because I took it, obviously. And then the next time I run it, we'll check the value of got thing. Um, the variable equals that. If it's, uh, you know, false, turn that off and just click it. I don't know what It'll you want to do. It'll branch down here. Already, uh, took it. Uh, He'll look at it. He'll say that track. Asking. That's what's going it's on right now. Have it. I'm not giving it back. And then that state will end. And if this is interrupted, um, it'll stop the speech if that's what it's currently saying. So I don't know what you want me to do. That's why he stops there. It's because interrupt happens to this. To so it's not really me programming it to stop, you know, saying like for everything that he says, it's part of the system. I have a large um, ultra wide. So normally this fits in better because, you know, trying to fit this in just to the recording area while seeing this too. Maybe if this was maximized it makes more sense even though now you can't see what's going on you have more editing space but normally it'd be like you know that large on the screen and it's even larger if I like pop it out of the editor uh, the main in the editor but um, let's see so and then when the level starts let's see so this game level has some starting programs uh, let me see, got to look in the actual inspector. Starting programs for when the level starts. Let's go back to this guy. Let's drag this game level here. And, you know, this is different from myself. We don't have on click, on hovers, just all the starting programs. Zero, one, two, three, four, blah. Basically starting state, um, we just need to start with some kind of state. So it's a null thing. It's, it's a do nothing. Um, and then if got thing, if we already have the thing. So if we do have the thing though, when we first start destroy it before the player can see it because we already have it in our inventory. And that's represented by just this variable being true. And, um, I want to do some kind of inventory uh, rack, you know, later, some system for that. Um, but yeah, this is where you do just game logic as visual scripting, character, um, you know, event scripts. Um, you know, and, and all that monotonous stuff where we want to say, we want to programmatically, procedurally represent uh, logic and, and all that stuff, you know, without making a fun ton of scripts. So, nope, there's nothing. You can also here. play animations when the animation's done, then it'll also transition that state. And so the ones that exist here are just, um, they exist in the scene. Um, if I wanted to add anything, I could say, you know, inject whatever, and that'll create the program here in the Unity file. Let's see if there's anything. Oh, geez. That's the choreo clip. This is the program. If there's anything. 
So each of these items also has a little description blurb if you want to give them one and a common thing that's longer, but only the states will have the comment section. The rest of it, like uh, conditions and actions. Let's see, destroy object, there we go. So this is just a little title label and you don't see the comments, even though they have them, if you want to like, you know, go into the inspector and view these guys. And this is just a normal inspector because these are scriptable objects. So we just say what's selected. Let's get the editor for it. Uh, editor, draw the inspector in this region. Um, they're just standard Unity functions. And then if I open up these, I can see what all the states and actions are. And then if I click on one of the eyes, then it'll select it. And if it's already selected, it'll uh, scroll to it and then blink it. So these are sockets that uh, go to either bools or to other conditions that evaluate to true or false. So they're essentially bools too. So if I wanted to do or uh, evaluation, then uh, you know I could have bool. Can I drag it onto this? Yes, I can. Interesting. I programmed it in. I never tried it yet, so I feel like it's going to bug out. But, you know, this, let's see, uh, get the value of this guy. And then this is going to get timers if a certain amount of time has passed. Uh, can I connect it to this guy? So this is different than, because um, this is condition, and I showed conditions being able to, uh, you know, they have the on true, on false, and on true and on false can cascade forward. But when I cascade forward, if those conditions evaluate true um, and they have actions and they have state uh, transitions, those things will execute as opposed to this, where I just want to evaluate it. And if it's true or false, I know it's true or false, how this will evaluate, but it will not um, execute whatever is tied to the condition to happen on its true um, evaluation. Um, and just the fact that these go back and forth, it does get a little wonky, um, you know, as far as trying to figure out the flow of things. But um, it needs to go left and right for the states. And if that needs to go left and right, then everything just needs to go left and right because you can't really, you know, have a different convention. Basically, if you want to go one direction, you just drag stuff and make sure yourself that it goes one direction because um, that's what makes you beautiful. So that's this system for now. There's there's a lot that needs to be um, you know added to it, compounded onto it, um, even barring the bug fixes, which there's quite a few that needs to happen. But is that everything worth showing for this week? Yeah. So the editor, um, the data structures, and just the the ability to have that data structure execute the uh, the state machine execution. Uh, all fun in the sun.